Hey guys, it's Nurse Lemetria from Smart Edition Academy and in this video I'm going to show you guys exactly how to create a study plan for the T7 exam. Now you may be wondering why do you even need to create a study plan, right? Well, you know, when people are getting started out, you know, like especially when I was in nursing school and applying for different nursing programs, there's so many moving parts to keep track of. And especially when you're trying to study for an exam like this, you want to make sure that you try to keep things organized so that you do not get overwhelmed. When you're applying to different nursing programs, they all have their different requirements. Some may require one test while the others may require another. You need to keep track of deadlines, T-scores, and seeing where your strengths and your weaknesses are. So that's what we're going to go over in this video. So stay tuned to the end. You don't want to miss it. But please make sure that you download the free study planner, which there will be a link in the description box below. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So the first step you're going to do is go ahead and download the free study planner. You want to make sure that you are organized and that you, and that you familiarize yourself with whatever programs that you want to apply to, what they require, and what you need to do to make sure that you don't miss those deadlines. So go ahead and start there with this. And and as we scroll through the first few pages, you'll see that there is an admissions checklist in here, right? So go ahead and print this out. I highly encourage you to do so. But, you know, if you're in, you know, in a position where you don't have access to a printer, you can always just download and save this as a PDF file on your device. Or you could just copy it down. You just start down the old fashioned way with pen and paper and just keep it in somewhere handy where you can get where you can have easy access to it. The one here, as you see, you have everything sorted out. You have your application deadlines. You have a checklist here for which sections of the T's that you need to take for this specific program. And you also have the required test scores that you need. That's also helpful to, to put down and make note of. And you want to make sure that you put a lot of these things on your own personal calendar. Certainly make use of either a hard copy calendar, if you're one of those people that are more tactile and you still like a good old school calendar or a planner or a journal, make sure you transfer the dates and the things that you need to know from here into there. If not, you can still, of course, use your Google Calendar on your phone or whichever calendar that you have on your cell device so that you keep these things handy. And after that, once you're clear on what your programs need, you are ready to move on to step two. So step two is gonna involve taking a practice test. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and go right to the practice test. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go through the practice test and show you guys just the process so that you can see what you need to do and how to organize it. What happens when you get questions wrong and what most importantly, what should you do with that information to prepare for the next time you take another practice test? For there, you can see we didn't do so well on this first try, which was kind of intentional because I wanted to show you guys how to decipher this diagnostic test. So now that we've taken the practice test, you can look right here and see which sections that we need to do more work in. Um, right here on the left, they have it broken down by the categories. That and then which percentage of those that we got correct. So right here, I would know that I need to brush up on my acids and bases, an introduction to biology, the cell structure, function, and type, cellular reproduction, cellular respiration, and photosynthesis, chemical bonds, there was a zero on that one. But I know that with the design experiment and the endocrine system, I'm actually pretty strong on those. So I may not need to study those as hard as I may need to hit the ones that were more challenging. So what you're going to do is you're going to come to your study planner and then we're going to fast forward to page seven real quick. And with page seven, I'm going to put down my initial score and it's going to, I'm going to also, because it's a time test, I'm going to put down the time that it took to complete the test. Since this is, we're going to establish a baseline. When you first go round, you want to establish the baseline so that you can see where you improve. Okay. So I'm going to put down a list of my weakest areas. 
So as you're establishing your baselines for each section of the T's exam, you want to take about, when you're first getting started, definitely don't skip this step, you guys. Let, and let it take you about one to two days to get acquainted with this because you want to familiarize yourself with this type of test. Number one, that's going to reduce your test anxiety. So when you sit for the real T's exam, it you'll you'll know what to expect and you won't be so anxious and prone to just, you know, just making yourself a nervous wreck. You know, nobody wants that during a test like that. So you also can, again, hone in on your strengths and your weaknesses and hitting those weaknesses hard and making them turn to strengths. So now, after you've done that, you're able to move on to step three. With step three, you're ready to create your study plan. So let's go ahead and talk about exactly how to do that. So that way, the main goal is to get your studying down to just 25 to 35 minutes per session. Absolutely, it is possible. So when you're creating your study plan, you want to use testing and study materials that align with how you best learn. So for some people, that's going to be books. For some people, that's going to be video. Some people are audio visual learners. They need to see pictures and examples and things of that nature. Some people like to write things down. That works better for them. Do what works best for you. Another tip that I wanted to offer to you guys too is make sure that when you make your study sessions and you plan them, stick to them. You know, you want to make sure you don't just keep shuffling around your study sessions. You want to make sure you kind of approach it just like you would work. You know, just like you wouldn't call out frequently and you wouldn't have no calls, no shows. You don't want to skimp on your study sessions. So let's say, for instance, if you've got to be at work at, you know, 2 or 3 o'clock, you know, you got church or you're going out in the morning, make sure that you can set aside at least two to three hours before work or if you're up to it after work to make sure that you're getting that time in. Now, again, it shouldn't take very long. It depends on, you know, really what you want to do. But the goal is to do at least 25 to 35 minute sessions. So that way you're not burned out, right? Nobody wants that. If you set aside the two to three hours, that gives you time to go over at least four different sections of the T's exam, right? Now this right here is broken down. You can put down the month and the year and set up different plans for different days of the week. You wanna make sure that you jot down certain commitments, your top priority, your personal commitments, work commitments. Put all these things down and really organize your day so that you can fit in your study time when you need to. You want to pick four to five topics per week to focus on. And then you want to focus on those four to five topics for about one to two weeks before moving on and adding another one to two topics to your workload. Now, if you look at your reports and you feel overwhelmed, like, oh my gosh, I know I should be studying way more. Please don't get overwhelmed. Allow yourself about eight to 16 weeks to study for the T's exam. That is more than enough time to really get yourself to get yourself ready for this test. You can get a lot of effective studying done in that amount of time. And so you don't want to try and cram it, studying everything all at once. That is just not good. It is not a good use of your time, especially if you're a parent and you have other obligations that you have to go, that you have to do and you work. And if you're wondering just how are you supposed to study in 25 to 30 minutes, hang on, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to break it down so that you can have so that you can see it literally can only take you guys 25 to 35 minutes. Let's review what we've done so far. Step one, get clear on what your program requires you to do. Make sure you're familiar with that. You've got to familiar with what's on the test and what's not on the test. And you've identified all your strengths and weaknesses. And then you're also going to use study materials that align with your study style. You know, nowadays, we don't have to just rely on books like we did in the olden days. You know, we got video, audio, audio books, all types of things that you can do. Even while you're riding in the car, you can still listen to a lot of the study materials if you use a Bluetooth in your car. And then you're going to pick four to five topics to study for just two weeks at a time. And then you're going to study each topic at least twice a week minimum. And each time you study that topic, you're going to do it for just 25 to 35 minutes. And then at the beginning of the third week, you're going to pick up another one to two topics. Now, at the end of the third week, I want for you to take another practice test. So you want to make sure that you take a practice test for the section you've been studying. So 
right here we've been focusing on science so for me at the end of the third week I will take a science practice test and then once you get to that point you want to go over here to the planner and then go to page nine and on page nine you have your practice test retake page that helps you keep that organized so you get your original score and have them all here reading English science and math and your retake score taken on the date of and there's a blank space for that and you have a place right here to put your score and once you begin to do this you can compare how you're doing once you get this filled out you can compare how you're doing but you want to make sure that over time that you are seeing improvements in your scores. So you're basically gonna repeat this process over and over and as your test date gets closer, you'll know which areas that you need to work on the most. So next, you're probably wondering how in the heck am I supposed to study within 25 to 35 minutes? Well, let me show you. So right here, I remember that I didn't do so well on the acid-base portion of the test on my diagnostic page. So I'm gonna go right here to the acid-base section. And right here is where we're going to find the module for acids and bases that's going to contain this video. As well as a written course material. First, you're going to want to take 5 to 10 minutes to read through the lesson module. So you want to come down here to the written portion, go over all of this, familiarize yourself with it so that when you're watching that video, it's not just the first time you're hearing about it. Go ahead and check all this out, get to the bottom of the page. You'll see it's pretty thorough and make sure that on the way down you are taking these questions again. You know, those first couple tries you may not get it correct and that's okay. It gives you a baseline to start with. Try not to put so much pressure on yourself at first. Like I said, 8 to 16 weeks is a lot of time and you can gain a lot of ground. So we're going to keep going down, down, down and then we're going to finish. And then you're going to go do the review section. You don't want to mark as complete. You're going to go back up here and watch the video. When you get to this video, this is going to take roughly about 10 minutes of your time. So you can see roughly about how long these videos are. I believe this one's 8 minutes, 8 minutes and 11 seconds. But most importantly, because this is animated, the content stick out. And they... um show you again like I said before exactly how it's done not what it's what not just merely just telling you what it is it shows you how and that's the important part so you watch your video and then you get to the end and then the next 5 to 15 minutes I want you to go over to the question bank by topic we're going to specifically because we're doing acids and bases we're going to go to the chemistry section right here and we're going to go to the acids and bases right here. At first, I would say at least you should try to do five of them. But, you know, if you have more time, and because right here, after you answer it, it gives you the opportunity to check it right there. So you don't have to do, um, like with the full practice test, you don't have to do the whole entire um, test to get the answer. So you can just do it, do through three. You can get the answer immediately after you submit your answer. So let's try this one right here. Again, I'm just going to pick something, you know, just for the sake of time. Oh, it's good. Good old H2O. And we're going to check our answer and see what it says right here. And that is incorrect. It gives you the correct answer. And it also tells you, uh, it gives you a rationale for that answer as well. So make sure you read those carefully. And then you can proceed on to the next question. Using the pH skill, which step or which substance would be slippery to the touch when dissolved in water? So you could... Um, Let's say just you know I'm picking something right here check okay got that one correct and if you're getting questions wrong guys please try not to be discouraged stay encouraged you know um because like I said that that is a learning opportunity but you know like I said just don't give up and try try very hard to not get discouraged you guys but that's really it you guys so that's really how to maximize that 20 to 25 to 35 minute window of time so it's easily digestible, it's, it stops you from being overwhelmed and stops you from getting fatigued when it comes to studying and reading for long periods of time. Just try it out, see for yourself, you know, what do you have to lose, you know what I mean? Before we go, let's recap one last time what, what exactly we just covered in this video. So you identified what your program is going to be requiring from you, what you need to know, your deadlines, requirements, what tests are required. Then you're going to go ahead and take your practice tests. 
From there, you can plan your planner based on the results of that practice test. You're going to use your strengths and your weaknesses to determine which route you're going to take after taking the practice test. And then you're going to create a study plan that lasts around three weeks, incorporating four to five topics at a time for about two weeks. And then on that third week, you're going to add in another one to two topics. Keeping in mind that you're going to keep your study sessions capped at about 25 to 35 minutes each time. By week three, you should be adding one to two more topics. And then by the end of that third week, prepare yourself to take another practice test. Prepare yourself to take another practice test that's going to be focused on exactly what you've been studying. You're going to review your answers, note your scores, and formulate your game plan, battle plan, whatever you want to call it, from there. And then you're going to repeat that process over and over until you've gotten your scores up exactly where they need to be so that you will be sure to pass your test when you're ready to sit for it. So you guys, I hope this video has been super helpful. Let me know in the comment section what you thought and if you found this video to be something that, you know, you definitely think you can incorporate in your life. Also, please don't forget to print out that study guide or if you don't print it, jot it down, but definitely make use of it. It certainly is going to help you keep your life organized. With that said, Happy studying, you guys. Again, my name is Nurse Lemetria with Smart Edition Academy, and I thank you for watching this video. You guys take care. Stay stress-free. Don't fret about it. You guys are going to do fine, and I will catch you in the next video. All right, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.